Hey everybody, it's Jack here, Talk Norris City. Hope you guys are all doing very well indeed. What a brilliant few days it's been for Norwich City, but we come out of them brilliant few days with injury concerns left, right and centre. So I thought we can use this video today um, to kind of debrief over the last week because it's been really chaotic. Norwich City remain top of the championship table thanks to wins over Middlesbrough and Stoke City. Very contrasting performances, very contrasting results. But at the end of the day, we got out of it with two wins. Away at Middlesbrough, away at Stoke, that's absolutely fantastic. But as I said, we have injury concerns. And I've stolen this from The Athletic, but um, shout out to The Athletic. I did a podcast with them the other day. And by the way, um, you can find that on Michael Bailey's Twitter account. This is the uh, injury list we've currently got. And Michael's put it in a team. And I'm looking at this team of injured players and I'm thinking that team could probably beat the majority of other championship sides. Tim Krul is out, Bally Mumba, Sam Byram and Javi Quintilla, Lucas Roop and Kenny McLean are both out, Onel Hernandez, Kieran Dowell and Campwell, and Ida and Hugo. We have a full 11 players there, um, slightly questionable formation, but a full 11 players who are all injured and a lot of them for a significant amount of time. Now, the fresh injury concerns from the Stoke game is, of course, Tim Krul. And that's the big one. Um, if you were going to, you know, if there's one play you don't want to lose, it's Timu Puki or Tim Krul. Tim Krul has been the best goal goalkeeper in the championships this season. Data, facts, stats, opinion backs that up. He's been absolutely wonderful and saved us a lot of points this season. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be at the top of the championship table and he hobbled off against um, Stoke and having read some of the post-match comments it seemed like he was going into the game with a slight niggle again he's 32 years old he's had serious injuries before he's played a lot of football recently including international football an injury was going to come at some point and sadly it came on Tuesday night now some people are saying six weeks I'm hearing from the people I've spoken to three weeks. However, whether it's three, whether it's six, that takes you out of a significant amount of football um, because at the moment it's games Tuesday, Wednesday and Saturday every single week. So even if we're out for three weeks, you're missing six games, which is a big um, amount of football at the moment. However, Michael McGovern came in, did concede twice. Um, wouldn't necessarily say either of them um, were his fault, but he certainly didn't look as assured as Tim Krul. But what I would say is less respect Michael McGovern. He is a an international footballer um, who has a really good CV. And there's no, not going to be too many championship sides um, in this you know, in, in this current situation where they lose a goalkeeper in Tim Krul and can bring in another international goalkeeper in Michael McGovern. So I think we're in a fairly lucky position there. Hopefully it's not too long. Hopefully it's, you know, three weeks as some people have been mentioning. The other one, of course, is Timu Puki, who um, looked like he had a bit of a tight hamstring. Again, that doesn't surprise me. And what we have to realise here is this was expected. Like the sheer intensity of this football season a normal football season is intense this year especially is even more intense because you've got um a, a really jam-packed schedule they've they've fitted a full football season in a condensed period of time so there's more games there's more um you know intensity for these players Timu Puki if he's injured we really are screwed because we don't have another striker Hugel's injured Eder's injured Dermich isn't registered you're then looking um, at the under-23 squad and apparently their setups um, just as bad in terms of injuries at the moment as Norwich City. So you then might be looking at, I don't know, Puemazwa Pueta or someone like that going up front. So that would be a really serious one. Hopefully that's not too bad. And I think it was more precautionary, the fact that we took him off against Stoke. You've also got added into the equation going into uh, this Saturday's game against Coventry. The fact that Emi Buendia is now suspended after his... Um, book it his double booking against Stoke I thought it was harsh um the first one especially the second one I can see where that's a booking it was a high foot but the first one wasn't um you know I don't think that was necessarily fair but I'm certainly not going to moan about the referee's performance on Tuesday night because Stoke's third goal was no way a foul like no way 
in the world is that ever a foul? So if Norwich had scored that to equalise, having been 3-0 down at one point and it had been disallowed, I'd still be fuming now. So I'm sure there'll be some dodgy decisions going against Norwich this season, but we've had a good few weeks in terms of refereeing decisions. The the spot against, um, against Middlesbrough were, with a double touched penalty from um, Tavernier, how he spotted that's brilliant. And then Stoke, um, that it should have been 3-3 if, if decisions had gone. Um, as they should have done. So Norwich are in a in a position now. I think if anyone would have offered any Norwich fan to be top and to be, I think, four points clear of sixth place at the moment um, in you know late November, they would have you know most Norwich fans would have probably accepted that with twenty injuries. So we're in a really good position at the moment. And you still look at Norwich's setup like with all of these injuries, and I've shown you the team. Um, you know the injury, the injury eleven. We can still field a really good squad. Like the defensive unit, yes, we've got um, Ballymumba out and and Kintia out, but we bring in Sorensen, and Sorensen's been really good there. And thankfully, the centre back pairing stayed fit. That's so important. Max Aaron's at right back, and I don't think it's going to be as chaotic on Saturday. One because Coventry aren't aren't Stoke. They're not as good as Stoke. Um, and, and they've struggled somewhat in the championship season, although they did get a win uh, on Wednesday night. And you've also got another few days of training in you. Like the defensive line will be more suited and prepared to having Michael McGovern in behind them. I was a defender um, as, a, as, a, as a young lad, not a good one, really, really bad one. Um, but having a good goalkeeper in behind you is so important just to organise you because often there's stuff going on in behind you or in front of you and the goalkeeper has the whole vision of the pitch and they can instruct you to do certain things. So having that vocal um, leadership behind you is really important. And I'm sure, look, Michael McGovern knows what he's doing. That's not necessarily a worry. Um, what would be a worry is Timu. So we just have to keep our fingers crossed um, for the press conference from Daniel Fark tomorrow that it's not terrible news. But in terms of the performance against Stoke, for 60 minutes, incredibly pleasing. Like to score three goals away at Stoke, brilliant. I thought we looked so good going forwards. I thought the introduction of Josh Martin was a really inspired one. And I know I've been critical at, at, at times of Daniel Farker on this YouTube channel, but his willingness to introduce young players and just put full trust in them is phenomenal. Like there's not many managers that would be willing to do that, certainly in the championship, when there's a lot of expectation on you as well. There's pressure on Daniel Farker this time round. You could argue when he threw Max Ahrens and Jamal Lewis and Todd Cantwell and Ben Godfrey in um, in 2018-2019. Yeah, there was still pressure on him, but not as much as this season. There's genuine expectation for us to be promoted this season. So to have the willingness to just throw you know, a 19-year-old Josh Martin in there away at Stoke, which is a tough game, and just give him freedom is brilliant. And I thought he was absolutely excellent. Like the, the work he put in for, well, he got the assist for, for the third goal. Pretty much got the assist um, for the first goal. Brilliant, brilliant piece of skill on the left-hand side to thread Pukki through. And you could just see the tackles from the Stoke players. They were miles away from the ball in that first half. They could not catch us. And it was certainly the most promising attacking performance maybe barring Bristol City this season. So if we can take that into to Coventry, I think there's going to be a few more goals conceded in the coming weeks and the championship starts to get crazier as we as we approach Christmas. But really, really pleasing signs um, for Norwich City. I just wanted to say as well, a massive thank you to the support recently. We've passed 20,000, we've passed 20,100 subscribers. Um, we're closing in on 20,500 subscribers, which is brilliant. So if you are new to the channel, please do feel free to subscribe. Thank you to everyone who's donated on Ko-fi and Super Chats, just supporting us, which is brilliant. I really do appreciate it. We'll be back again on Saturday for another watch along. Um, but until then, have a lovely few days and, uh, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.